God, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Okay, I need two careful people to help me with the mystery box. How about Liz and Jacob, since you're on the ends, why don't you come on up? Now, have you noticed anything new about our mystery box? It, it looks like a treasure box. Jim Stredwick made this for us. Isn't it beautiful? Yeah, so we have a brand new uh, mystery box, but the thing inside of it can't be jostled around, so you need to um, open it carefully. We're not going to move it. Get the latches and see what is inside the mystery box. Can somebody hold it up carefully for us to see so everybody can see? It's a fish. <coughs> Does anybody recognize this fish? Do you know where it comes from? Have you seen it swimming around before? Yeah, Theo, Gordon? It comes from the Sunday school room. So whenever you go into the Sunday school room and you see this little fish, you can think about today's message. Now, do you think that you could put our little fish up there on the, uh, on the table? I'm actually open to names for our fish. Does anybody have a great name for a fish? Gordon. Wait, that's not a, a name. <laughs> You've got a name. Jimmy. Jimmy. Okay, Jimmy the fish. Jimmy the fish from Sunday school is up here. All right. Now, why do we have a fish in the mystery box? Well, in order to answer that question, we need to know something really special about the mystery box which is that it has a secret compartment that Jim built into it. So maybe Theo and Gordon, can you guys come up? Liz and Jacob, you can go back. And can you guys see whether you can help me find the secret compartment in the... Okay, there you go. Can you lift that up and get what's inside of it? Can you get your hand in there? Okay, there's one envelope. Two envelopes. And three envelopes. Okay, we have three envelopes. What do they say on them? It says that we have story one. Story number two and story number three. Now, I wonder, Elijah and Sydney, can you guys hold on to stories two and three for me? And let's find out what story number one is. We have three stories about fish. Story number one, Jonah and the big fish. All right. So Jonah and the big fish, let me tell you story number one about fish. It has to do with a guy named Jonah, and God had a job for Jonah to do, and Jonah didn't want to do that job. God wanted Jonah to go to Nineveh and tell the people to listen to God. And guess what? Jonah did not like the people of Nineveh and didn't want to go to Nineveh at all. And so Jonah ran away from God. And what happened to Jonah is he got swallowed by a big fish. And he had to spend three days in the belly of the fish. And then when he came out of the fish, do you think he was a little more willing to listen to God? <laughs> Yeah, he was a little bit more willing to listen to God when he came out of the fish. Now, do you think that this story tells us that we need to be afraid of big fish? That they might swallow us if we don't listen to God? No, that's not what this story tells us. This story tells us, though, that we can get into trouble. We can get into some sticky situations. We can get into some slimy situations if we don't want to listen to God. So this first story about fish 
tells us that we need to be ready to listen to God. I'm going to give story number one to Tanya because maybe she'll want to hang up the stories in the Sunday school room above Jimmy the fish for a little while so that you can remember these stories when you go to see Jimmy. All right, Sydney, can you open up envelope number two and tell me what is inside? Okay, so this story number two tells us fish for people. Well, this takes place at the very beginning of Jesus' ministry. And so Jesus goes out and he starts to draw people into God's word. He's work. He goes out and he tries to fish for people because he knows that he can't do God's work all by himself. So he gathers these people with him, and the first people that he goes to are fishermen. And he tells the fishermen that they also, just like Jesus, need to go and fish for people. And do you know what those fishermen do? They're out, they're working, they're earning some money, they're looking after their families. And when Jesus says, follow me and fish for people, they drop everything that they're doing and they follow Jesus. So they're kind of the opposite of Jonah. Jonah had to be swallowed by a fish in order to listen and follow. But these fishermen, the very first disciples, they were just ready to drop their nets and to follow Jesus and to go fish for people. Why did they need to go and fish for people? What do you think, Theo? Because the, because the people are hungry. Because the people are hungry. That is a really interesting answer. And, uh, you know, I think that you're right on the right track. Let's look in envelope number three, and maybe we can find out why. Jesus wanted people to fish for people. Story number three. What does it say? It says, you are a fish. Well, that's a weird message for story number three. You are a fish. I've never really thought of myself as a fish. Have you thought of yourself as a fish? Yeah, Elijah can't breathe underwater, so maybe he's never thought of himself as a fish. Well, here's the thing. If Jesus tells us that in order to follow him, we have to fish for people, he's also telling us something else. He's also telling us that we are fish. So what does that mean? What does it mean to be a fish like Jimmy? Well, I want you to think with me for a moment. What would happen if we took Jimmy out of his water? How would Jimmy do outside of the water? He would die. He would die. Yeah, he would kind of flail around and he would not do very well out of the water. Well, here is the thing, is that when our lives are not part of God's life, when we don't listen to God, when we don't have God as part of our lives, then we're kind of like Jimmy the fish out of water. We kind of flail around. We have a really hard time breathing. Maybe, maybe we kind of die in some way if we're not staying close to God. And so the message that Jesus gives to those first disciples and to all of us is actually the very same message that Jonah was supposed to give to the people of Nineveh. And that message is right here at the bottom. Can you see what it says? It says, repent. repent. Does anybody know what repent means? Does anybody out there know what repent means? Turn. It means to turn. So when we feel like a fish out of water, 
And you know what? We all feel like that at some time or another. We all, at some time or another, we forget God. And we kind of get lost, and maybe we have a hard time breathing, and maybe we flail around a little bit. Whenever we're like Jimmy the fish out of water, we need to hear that message to repent because it means that if we just turn around, God is there. We don't have to do this alone. We don't have to be a fish out of water. God is there, and if we turn around, then we can be like Jimmy the fish, swimming around very nicely in the water, breathing easily, and, and happy as a fish. So that same message, that same good news message that Jonah eventually gives to the people of Nineveh is the same message that Jesus tells us is the good news. You don't have to do it yourself. Repent, turn around. God is right there, and God loves you. So thank you, everybody, for helping us tell these three fish stories. And like I said... You are welcome to continue to visit Jimmy the Fish in your Sunday school room. All of you guys are welcome to visit Jimmy the Fish as well. If you need a little reminder about these three stories to listen, to follow, and to turn back to God. Now, one of the ways in which we turn our lives back to God is through prayer. Prayer for ourselves and prayer for others. We're going to continue our worship service now. We're going to stand up, and we are going to uh, proclaim our faith. Jim is going to lead us through that, and then we are going to pray.